The following presentation is rated TVPG. Monkeys, could somebody please just tell me why are there still monkeys? Does God have a sense of humor? I think he probably, he's got to have the best sense of humor because he's probably the best of everything, you know. God has a great sense of humor. First of all, do we think we invented it? Well, I think God has a sense of humor. After all, he made me. <laughs> I think that some people uh, are reluctant to talk about humor and God and religion because they don't realize that God has a sense of humor. If we're made in his image, then he would have to be a laughing creature. He's not a solemn, you know, doer guy up there, you know. A lot of funny jokes, you know. Sent his only son down, you know. It'll be perfectly safe. <laughs> they will listen to you. The reason why I think God has a sense of humor, the 12 people he had on his staff, I mean, you, gotta, you know, and I don't mean, <laughs> they, they were dysfunctional. I mean, think about it. These 12 guys were dysfunctional. I mean, the head leader, Peter, he cut you and cuss you at the same time. And, and the Catholic Church said he's the, he's the first pope. The God of the laughter, the God of the celebration. This is the God of Scripture. If the Bible shows God's character, a sense of humor should be evident within the pages. First, I give you Abraham and Sarah. He was 100, she was 90. They're waiting for a child. <laughs> After years of waiting, God comes up and tells them they're finally going to get one. And listen, Viagra hadn't been invented yet. Come on, this guy's dead as a doenail. He says I'm dead. What did Abraham do? He fell on his face laughing. Abraham knew God so well, he knew he was joking. In my opinion, the whole total world has a misconception of God. It's called religion. See, religion is man-made. Religion is a theology. It's a set of doctrines and beliefs. I mean, a student said to me, I want a God that I can understand rationally. And my response was, God refuses to be that small. Religion comes from Latin word relatio, which means to relate to. So religion means relating to God. I love the movie, Oh God. I love the movie when John Denver looked at God and he said, if you're God, why do you appear to me? I don't belong to any religion. And God said, neither do I. To anyone who says that comedy is inappropriate in church, I want to say categorically, theologically, and philosophically, If there's no humor in the church, who wants to go? I think humor is vitally important in church, because let's face it, church is a drag. Even as a kid, I used to sit there in church, and every week they'd ask that question, you know. They'd change the sermon, but at the end they would say that same thing. They would say, when you die, do you want to burn in the fires of hell? Or do you want to go to heaven and live forever and be happy? No, I'm like six years old. I'm sitting here thinking, what, you got people in the back trying to make up their mind on this or what? You got hands up for hell back there, do you really? There's no hands up back there. What do you keep asking us that question for? <laughs> if we wanted to be to hell, we wouldn't be in church, man. <laughs> Since we are in church, why don't you tell us something we need to know, like how much we can sin and still get in. That's what I'm here to find out. And... Christianity is filled with paradoxes. The Jews expected Jesus to be a great messiah, a great king, a great warrior. They got a carpenter. You generally don't expect the person doing your kitchen cabinets to save the world. If you want to make an audience nervous and shuffle in their seats, bring up Jesus. Everything that God wants us to do seems to be the opposite of our nature. Have a trial? Be joyful. Worried about tomorrow? The birds of the field don't worry. Someone slaps you on the cheek? Turn the other cheek. 
Ask for your jacket, give him your shirt. See a pretty girl, look the other way. These are the easy ones. You know, there were some people that, who, who would say that clowning around and making Christianity into this time of levity is sacrilegious. They have good company, the Pharisees. We just built a brand new sanctuary, as a matter of fact. Couldn't afford it, did it anyway. <laughs> Our slogan was, maybe God will come back before we have to pay for it. People have the wrong idea about comedy in church many times, or they can't even put the, the words together. Comedy, church, ah, oh, this is an oxymoron if I've ever heard one. Sometimes you find yourself sitting in church, you'll, you'll be singing and your mind will wander off, your mouth is going, but you're thinking completely different thoughts, you know, and, and, and maybe no one even noticed, right? Because you could have that, that spiritual worship look on your face like you're really into it, you know, kind of. <laughs> so, oh, they must be spiritual, you know. Just, but then your mind starts wandering off as you're singing, it's like, Alleluia, do the laundry. Alleluia, gee, I'm hungry. Alleluia, who's that girl in the front row? Is she single? Thank you, Jesus. Rep, you guys. Uh, it's fun to poke fun at people in, in church because they deserve it. Believers in God, the Bible, church-going Christians need to first of all lighten up and laugh at ourselves, realize that <laughs> we are fit subjects for humor. Must be holy. Must be holy. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in it. Some people view Christians as being uh, very serious and humorless people because I think that what they, they look at the Christian doctrine as a doctrine of doom. The church is full of people like me who go around pretending that we're better than we really are. And it is so important for, the, for somebody to pinch the balloon and let all the hot air out. Sometimes, let's just face it, Christians get this attitude that we're better than you are. If Christians don't laugh at themselves. Non-Christians, interestingly enough, will not take them seriously. Well, how many here can raise their hands in church? How many get excited and just raise their hands in church? Oh, a lot of you are. There you go. I can't do that. I'm a Presbyterian. <laughs> We're afraid if we raise our hands in church, God might call on us. Humor is, it's essential. It's, um, it's a, as much a part of you as your heart and your mind, uh, what makes you go, what makes you breathe, uh, your lungs, everything, uh, humor's there. A person would say, I just got to do something about my temper. I'm always losing my temper. Nobody ever says, yeah, I got to do something about my humor. I just have too much humor. One woman asked me, Chris, are you mad at God for giving you cerebral palsy? And I said, ma'am, God didn't do this. One day, I ate ice cream way too fast. <laughs> I'm a minister. People cast you in a role, and uh, it's a ludicrous role, and that you're somehow a breed apart, and somebody's got to destroy that, and nothing can do it better than humor. Recently, maybe I was a little too real in the pulpit when I told about my father asking me to empty the trash. And he said, after asking me eight times, My dad said to me, I cannot believe that out of two million of my sperm, you were the quickest. <laughs>
you can pretty much tell what you need to know about the religions from the symbols. Catholic Church, we have the crucifix, which is the cross with the corpus, Latin for body, the corpus on it, which is the body of Jesus on it. When you go to the Protestant church, they just have a blank cross. That's because Jesus doesn't want to hang with them. There's just too many religions. <clears throat> That's the problem. Everybody's religions are different, and everybody thinks they're right. And I love that expression, Jewish persuasion, you know, like someone persuaded me to be Jewish at <laughs> one point in my life, like some guy, some Jewish guy in a schoolyard. Come here, kid. You like bagels? Get over here. Yeah. Every religion's got a really positive point. The most faith? Oh, I give that to the Jews, hands down. They followed Moses in the desert for 40 years and the guy was completely lost. <laughs> That's faith, because I'd have been there and they're standing there going, see, he's just a typical guy who will not stop and ask where we are. <laughs> 40 years they were lost. He had a wife. You know, she was just crabbing at him. I have asked you to stop and get directions for 27 years now. You got to understand about Moses. He, he, he was normal. You know, he stuttered. Think about that. God chose that man to pull three million people out of Egypt, and he'd say like this, follow me. <laughs> out Egypt they went. If I would have been with Moses crossing the Sinai, well, that, that's a stretch, isn't it? But th that would mean that Moses was, was, be, was leading a bunch of Mexicans, right? And it wouldn't have took us 40 years, because if there's one thing my people know how to do is find the border. So in my family, I've got a New Ager, a charismatic, dad's a Presbyterian, my wife was Catholic, but her knees gave out, so she's Presbyterian now. I'm glad I'm a United Methodist. You know why? The difference between Methodists and Baptists are the Baptists won't wave to each other in the liquor store. I've been in Methodist services and Lutheran services, and it's always so middle of the road. They're like, don't sin if you can. You know, um, if you do, just come on back. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Where the Catholics are like, here's the 900 things that will happen to you if you sin. And you're looking at that list as an eight-year-old going, oh, my God. But the Methodists and the Lutherans, it was like Catholic light. Actually, some people say that the, the Jews invented guilt, but the Catholics perfected it. Catholics take their guilt very seriously. That's why a Catholic without guilt is called an atheist. I had an atheist tell me to go to hell one night. That was a pretty interesting conversation. <laughs> I'm standing there thinking, I really don't think you can pull that part off, pal. You might want to reread your manual, but I really don't think you're allowed to go around saying that to people. <laughs> one thing I can't stand, it's a wishy-washy blasphemer. What do you get when you cross a Jehovah's Witness and an atheist? Somebody that knocks on the door but doesn't know why. I'd say the most unselfish religion, oh, I think you have to give that to the Jehovah Witnesses because they only believe that 144,000 people are going to heaven. That's it, 144. And I thought, well, that's fine, but if you believe that, would you go door to door trying to get more people? <laughs> I wouldn't even tell my own family. <laughs> Man, I heard there's only eight seats left. Shut up. I was visiting Harvard a few years ago, and the, I guess the chaplain of Harvard, uh, he would put the title of his sermon out on, you know, the little sign in front of Protestant churches. And as I recall, the title of the sermon that week was, if you give up sex for Lent, you're looking toward Easter for all the wrong reasons. Jesus' humor might be a little darker because he went through more, I think, you know, here on earth uh, with the crucifixion. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that we know is that before God sent Jesus to earth, he talked to him. He had a talk and he said, my son, I'm sorry about this, but I'm going to have to send you to earth to atone for the sins of humanity. Now, but since I am God, I would be able to control the way that you would have to die. I give you two choices. Either you could be crucified or you could be stung to death by bees. Which would you choose? And Jesus thought about it for a second and said, well, I think I'll take the crucifixion, which explains why now in the Catholic Church, when we bless ourselves, we say, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and instead of saying, do you see what I'm saying? I am a Catholic 
Ooh. Worst thing for me about being Catholic was crossing yourself. I had to settle for the sign of Zorro. There's a lot of humor in the Catholic religion. The nuns and the priests I remember the most were the ones who made us laugh. Those of us who have had some religious background, uh, if we look back at our experience, the, 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 the priests, the, the ministers, the rabbis, whoever, that we uh, were often the fondest of or who we marked as the, the best speakers often had a sense of humor. My friend Father Griffin in Notre Dame would always tell me jokes all the time and he was very funny and, and a lot of them would be would be Catholic jokes. He would tell me jokes like, uh, do you know why uh, Christ didn't go to college? And I, I'd say no, and he said, because he was nailed on his boards. And, uh, <laughs> and this was a priest telling <laughs> this kind of stuff. And I had nuns who wore wedding rings. Anyone had nuns who wore wedding rings? Yeah, and this indicated that they were the bride of Christ. And I'd sit there thinking, he's been dead for 1,900 years. It's time he started dating again. <laughs> go out, get some new clothes. <laughs> In high school, I was taught by the priests. Now, these guys weren't tough enough to become nuns. <laughs> the fact that Christ was conceived without sex is called the virgin birth. The Immaculate Conception refers to the conception of Mary in the womb of her mother Anne in the regular way without the stain of original sin. See? Yeah, I grew up in a uh, small family by Catholic standards. We were just the 19 of us. And uh, my dad's name is John. People call him Jack for short. I always think to myself, how much shorter is that really, you know? <laughs> Anyone saving time with it? <laughs> also, a brother named John, brother named Thomas. Of course, my name is James. My mother name is half the apostles, which I think is kind of neat. <laughs> Except my sister, Judas. You know, she's not happy, but... Uh... I went to Wrigley Field in Chicago one time and there were two nuns sitting at the ball game and they had the habits on and there were two guys sitting behind the nuns and they couldn't see the game over the nuns' habits. And one guy got very angry and he said to his buddy loud enough so the nuns could hear him, he said, I'm gonna go to Texas, only 15% of the population there are Catholic. The other guy said, yeah, I'm gonna go to Oklahoma, only 10% of the population there are Catholic. And one of the nuns turned around and said, why don't you go to hell, there are no Catholics down there. I'm Catholic, we don't read the Bible. We don't read the Bible. We pay a priest to read that for us. Yeah. The guy's got all week off and no wife. He can certainly show up with a 45-minute book report once a week. <laughs> As children, we were told not to read the Bible uh, because we might misinterpret the Bible. We're not, the Bible is not subject to personal interpretation. We need sister to tell us what we think about that. Do you see? Well, you know, you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand the Bible. Stay in a Marriott hotel. You don't, you, you don't get the Bible. You get the Book of Mormon. I look at that Book of Mormon and I think, you know, it's one thing that Catholics don't read the Bible, but at least we didn't just, like, make one up. As kids, we were always encouraged to bring as many pagans as we wanted to. You could bring ten little pagans with you to Mass on Sunday when you were a kid. You could bring as many non-Catholics. And we were always encouraged to bring them to Mass on Sunday because, you know, they may want to convert. But we were forbidden, forbidden, forbidden from ever, 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 ever attending a non-Catholic service. What would happen if you went down the block with little Janie, the Baptist girl, to her church, the Baptist church on Sunday? And they're singing and clapping and happy, huh? It could confuse you. We weren't supposed to go. When I was going to Catholic school, you weren't allowed to go to other churches. In those days, it was a church rule that you weren't allowed to go to other churches, other services. Today, of course, they do allow you. In fact, they encourage you to go to other churches. In fact, they encourage you to bring other denominations to your church. The church I go to here in the valley, St. Jane Francis, for the entire month of August, if you bring a Jew, they'll validate your parking. I'm Catholic, I'm single, and I still go to church, which makes me a priest. <laughs> Four more years and I'm a bishop. Uh, my mother always wanted me to become a priest, which I think is a tough occupation. Can you imagine giving up your sex life and then once a week people come in and tell you the highlights of theirs? Now, last Saturday I was at my best friend's wedding. Uh, back in New York. Big scandal at the wedding, too, because we found out that the bride was pregnant. Uh, shocked my parents because they're Catholics, and Catholics believe, you know, you're not supposed to tell anybody. When I was a young boy uh, going to Catholic school, dating, 
and I got to that age where I was dating, and I never knew which girls to date. So I would stand outside the confessional and see which girls stayed in there the longest. Sophie Giannata would stay in there 10 minutes, the priest would leave and take a cold shower. I don't know if I'll ever get married, but if I do get married, I'll never get a divorce, because Catholics don't get divorces. They get annulments, which is a statement from the church that your marriage never even existed. So all you have to do is get rid of the photographs. <laughs> you ever go to Kmart, you see those picture frames with the people already inside them? Those are the Catholics. <laughs> Hiding the evidence. I was raised Catholic. My brothers and sisters uh, don't go to church anymore. We don't want the Catholic school. It's a fairly common thing. If people are brought up strict Catholics, a lot of times they go to church so much, it's been indoctrinated into you so much that they just bail out for some reason or another. Okay, we, we have the term failed Catholics, recovering Catholics, lapsed Catholics, but we never hear the term failed Methodist, recovering Methodist, lapsed Methodist. Well, I think a, a the reason we hear about failed Catholics is, is maybe just, maybe the standards were higher. You know, maybe the test was more difficult and more people were flunking out. <laughs> I don't know. Falling away, lapsed, recovering, all these terms that we put in front of the word Catholic. When actually all we need to put is the word Roman Catholic in front of it and we'll be all set, do you see? We have denominations, non-denominations, and interdenominations, and you know, and the reason, and and they all determine what sin is and what sin. Let me tell you what sin is. It's a very simple definition, and you can look at it in the Hebrew. It simply means, or the Greek, missing the mark. Everything was a sin, sin, sin. Sleeveless dress, a sleeveless dress was a sin. If an armpit turns you on, you need deliverance, man. But you can't make your personal conviction law to somebody else. You see, and I think denominations, non-denominations, and interdenominations have done that, and they put this tag on it called sin. And it may not have been sin. Is it a sin for women to wear pants? I said, ma'am, it's a sin for women not to wear pants. That's the problem. <laughs> Most people don't have to go to hell to get condemned. They do a pretty good job of it on themselves. Humor is a sign that you're at peace with yourself. You don't have to come back to God feeling like a jerk. Come back to God knowing you're a jerk. <laughs> but also knowing that he's merciful to jerks. We're not the sacred sorority for snubbing sinners. You should know the difference between a mortal sin and a venial sin. Venial sin is a small sin, mortal sin is a big sin. Venial sin would be like, I lied to my grandmother. Mortal sin would be like, I killed my grandmother. Big difference. Lord Chesterton once said that God may be the only child left in the universe, and all the rest of us have become far too serious because of sin. I don't believe in begging for money. I think it's wrong. In fact, I'll even get stronger than that. I think it's a sin. I really do. Because you're saying, God can take care of me. God can help me. And then all of a sudden you change over and say, but God can't pay my bills. Now, wait a minute. Something's not right. And when I'm on television, you never hear me say, won't you help me? <laughs> won't you help me? If I don't hear from you today, listen to me, listen to me. If I don't hear from you today, we're going off the air. Go off. <laughs> go on off. My God, man, that's just ridiculous. It's amazing to me they never go off the air. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. See, so somebody lying. Heaven or hell? I don't know. I hope there's a heaven. I hope Madonna goes directly to it. Not because I like her, it's because I'm counting on her to set the curve. <laughs> heaven? I don't know if I'm good enough for that. Hell, I'm not, certainly not bad enough for that, but purgatory, I was like, what a good idea. Middle ground, you know. Purgatory is, is kind of like the dry cleaners of heaven. That's where you go if you have an unsightly stain of sin on your soul. Eight o'clock in the morning, open up my door and a guy's looking at me going, do you want to go to heaven? Eight o'clock in the morning is the middle of the night for me. I'm standing there in a robe looking at this guy thinking, are you going to be there? 
I was kind of planning on sleeping late for eternity. I was, was told, um, in my house are many mansions. I prepared a place for you. I hope that the mansion I go to, if I go to it, is, is full of fun people. I don't want any mansion that's full of deadheads. But then, if I get that far, I'm sure I won't have any choice. Imagine that you're in the hospital bed, not doing too well, all hooked up to the tubes and the monitors. Priest comes in. Hello, Mr. Smith, I'm Father Murphy. I'm here to give you the last rites. A lot of times the response you get is beep, you know. We want to prepare you, not scare you. So we switch over to blessing of the sick, sacrament of the sick, anointing of the sick. Much more hopeful name for the sacrament. Like, you might get better, you know. There are times that are just so dark and so uh, seemingly hopeless that unless we can laugh, at sometimes even the hopelessness. That's a saving grace. Humor is a human way of handling tragedy. I'll say this, thank God for humor. <laughs> We have a little card that we carry in our wallets that says, I'm a Catholic in case of an emergency, please call a priest. This is a very valuable card, okay? So say you're walking down the street, you blam, and you get hit by a bus, you're laying in the gutter. Somebody looks in your purse and finds the card. Oh my goodness, <laughs> she's a Catholic, call a priest. Priest will come, give you a blessing of the sick, okay? And, and, and what would happen if you died right then? What would happen if you died in the gutter? Your soul would go straight to heaven just like that. Very valuable, very, but listen, don't be thinking, hey, this is great. I could be committing sin after sin after sin, no problem. I got the card, see? Because I tell you, you get hit by that bus, blam! Your purse will get knocked two blocks away. See what I'm saying? See, he's a master of reversals, God. He's a master of reversals. Just when you think you're doing well, you know, blam, it's, something happens. Like, I'm doing very well now. I finally fooled some people into thinking I was talented. They paid me a ton of money. By the time I earn it all, testicular cancer. <laughs> that's always the joke. You know, you're always going, that's funny. If we take the celebration out of the faith, we have not destroyed something important. We have destroyed something that's at the essence of the faith. I can't wait for the second coming, because I can't wait to see how the world is going to react to it, especially the media. I predict Time Magazine will call Christ Man of the Millennium. <laughs> Cosmopolitan will call him Bachelor of the Month. <laughs> the National Enquirer will say, Christ comes back, and he's seen Elvis. <laughs> Parents Magazine, the Son of God, how to raise an overachiever. Seventeen Magazine, oh my God. <laughs> Self Magazine, Christ comes back for me, not you, me. <laughs> and finally, Atheist Monthly, oops. <laughs>